Yeah, so again, I like to divide this into the need for injections when you're on high-dose steroids and when you're on replacement steroids. So if you're on high-dose steroids, the only reason you need to have an injection is if you, you're unable to take your steroids. So in the case of an automobile accident, on being unconscious, um, having surgery, things like that, you would need to have an injection because you're not able to put that pill or pills in the mouth and take them. Um, even on high-dose steroids, if you have one day of vomiting, probably is enough high-dose steroid around to sort of keep you going. But on high do any patient on steroids who requires steroids uh, for replacement, so that would be the people on high-dose steroids who are taking more than replacement, and the people who are taking replacement steroids because they're down to a level where they can, they're waiting to taper off and get off the steroids. Either of those situations, if the patient has a prolonged period of time where they can't take by mouth or their medicines don't stay put. So let's say you can put something in your mouth, but you're having diarrhea or vomiting, you're not going to absorb the medicine. In those situations, it is important to take, sure to have available and to know how to use an emergency kit for injection. Uh, our posture here is that we teach the patient and we teach the patient's family if the patient feels squeamish about it how to give an injection and if they don't want to do that we tell them to be in touch with their physician and generally the need for an emergency injection in that situation is because of an illness so a, a gastrointestinal illness um, a GI flu throwing up um, having diarrhea where you don't think the pills are being taken in uh, or having something happen where the patient is really unable to take the pills because they're uh, not aware enough to get up and take the pills. So sometimes people can be so sick that they just forget about getting up and doing the right thing. So though in those situations, it is important to take an injection. I, I think it's great not to be dependent on emergency personnel because Occasionally, this does happen because they don't want to take the responsibility. And what they'll usually say is they'll get you to the emergency room quickly enough that somebody there can assess the need to give the injection. Um, I think if a patient is concerned enough that they need an injection and they've had this experience with the EMT personnel, that probably they should have somebody teach them how to do it. And it's not very hard. It's just something that people aren't used to doing on a daily basis. So there's different ways of approaching the situation. Some of my patients don't like to give injections, and, and they assure me they can get to their doctor's office or an ER quickly enough. Um, and if they won't learn how to do it, I can't force them to do that. But I'm nearly all of my patients, um, and I treat disease conditions, Cushing syndrome, when you treat it, patients take a while to recover their HPA axis, and they are sort of like, they are people with secondary adrenal insufficiency, so they get treated the same way, and um, the, almost all of them learn to give the injection. And interestingly enough, the patients with Cushing syndrome that I take care of very rarely have to actually give themselves an injection. So it, at least in that setting, it seems not that common. <laughs>